guys, so in this video I wanted to talk about my experience working at GABA and if you ever considered working at GABA, um, you may decide if you want to do that or not. So obviously these days, because of the pandemic, it's kind of hard to move um, to work overseas. This is not the best timing to do this kind of a video, but I thought that um, a lot of people would probably be interested um, in knowing what's up. So I will go ahead and talk about that in this video. So I worked at GABA um for about a year in 2019 and i left about a year ago actually almost a year ago i already talked about how i moved to japan and uh, what am i doing here if you don't know i live in tokyo right now in another video so please go through this link and you can check that out but i thought i said in that video that if anybody's interested i can do a separate video talking about just gaba and some people wanted to know so that's why I'm doing this video. So basically, um, GABA in a nutshell is an English language school, one of the biggest English language schools in Tokyo or in Japan in general for teaching English man to man, so one on one lesson. And it's a very, very big company. There's a million of instructors, a million of schools, and it's a uh, very interesting place to work at, let me put it this way. So I don't want to be putting anything super negative about that, but obviously since I'm not working there anymore, you can see that um, if I really liked it, I would have probably stayed there. So <laughs> just make your own decisions about that. But um, it's a really good place if you need to get in Japan because they will sponsor your visa, you can apply from overseas, you do not have to have any prior teaching experience. So it's a really easy uh, company to get into if you just want to get a working visa and get in Japan. Some people even got the visa and never even started working there. I know some people who were on the first... When you get to Japan, you have to go through a three-day training and some people would show up on the first day and then they would never show up again. So they just got the visa and said deuces, which I think is a very smart thing to do. Maybe not the nicest thing to do, but some people definitely do that. Um, so um, I am a native Russian person, but as you can see, I speak English as well. So they do take people from non-English speaking countries, which is great because most of the companies, they want to have an American or British, Canadian or Australian person, but this company is one of the few that will actually take any country uh, citizen as long as you have a good English level. So there would be people from Russia, from France, from Italy, from Finland, from Germany, China, anywhere. So if you are a non-native English speaker, but you have a good level of English, this is a good place to apply to. How does it work? You never have a set salary. So most companies in Japan, you will have a set salary around 200 to 250,000 yen a month. You can work as a full-time employee in other companies and you will have a health insurance, you will have your transportation paid and all that good stuff. And you will have a lot of deductions from your salary for that. In GABA, on the opposite side, you're not a full-time employee, you're kind of like a contract employee, so you do not have any benefits whatsoever, you do not have health insurance, you have to do it yourself, they do not pay for your transportation, you have to do it yourself, so you do not have any social, pension, whatever, any, nothing. Um, all you have is your salary for as many lessons as you have taught, so that's where the biggest problem comes. Um, it's really hard to have um, stable income because some months will be good, some months will be bad, some months you will have a lot of clients, some months you will have no clients. So basically you can never know what's gonna happen. Some months when I worked a lot, especially in the beginning, I would teach almost six times a week, six days a week, and I had a lot of lessons and I would make like 300,000 yen, which is a lot. And some months um, I would not teach much and I will make like 100,000 yen a month. So it really depends, which is on the one hand a good thing if you're a really hard worker and you're good at teaching and clients just fly to you, then perfect. And you will probably make money um, super easily. But if you are not a good teacher or if your personality is not very talkative and clients don't really like you, you will probably not make much. So it, 
really you need to consider if you are able to teach well so that people will come to you. You don't have to necessarily be a good teacher, but like something about you that would make uh, the students want to come to your lesson. Studios are, there are so many studios, so you can always have a location that you prefer. You can always transfer studios. So if you were assigned a certain place after working there for a while, you can start working here and here. So this is really flexible. And flexibility is probably the biggest plus of GABA. So in a lot of Japanese companies, if you want to have a long vacation, that's probably not going to happen. If you want to suddenly go on a trip, obviously not these days, but in general, that's probably not going to happen. With GABA, you submit your schedule month to month. So in June, you'll submit your July schedule. In July, you'll submit your August schedule and so on. So every month you can change it to whatever plan you have in your mind. So if you want to take a month off, fine. Um, if you want to have a two week vacation, fine. If you want to work seven days a week, fine. It's really flexible. You can work in the morning, you can work in the evening, you can work morning and evening, have lunch time off, anything you want basically. It, that is great. And I'm that kind of a person that wants to have freedom. I don't want to have a set schedule. I want to decide what I want to do with my free time, with my <laughs> time every day. So if you're kind of like me, then that's the perfect place for you. But again, that comes with a lot of downsides. Like maybe you want to work in from, let's say, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., but that's not a peak time. The peak time is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So you have to consider, do you want more freedom or do you want more money? As for the people who work there, um, Again, it depends on the city. Most of the other instructors are really nice and you can make friends really easily, meet a lot of people from other countries. So that's also really good. Um, the reason why I left and the reason why I didn't stay there is because it got so repetitive to the point that I just could not do it any longer. It was so repetitive because you have the same textbook, same clients and uh, of course some of them would want to have free conversation and it might be interesting but a lot of people want to do the textbook and you will teach the exact same thing many many times many times and after like six months of doing that I just could not see that freaking textbook anymore so um, if you do not mind the repetitiveness then that will probably not be a big problem to you but I talked to a lot of other instructors and a lot of them were just losing their mind over how boring sometimes it gets and there were some people who've been working at Gabo for like 10 to 15 years which is incredible and the longer you work you can level up and get a higher salary and higher income but for the most part people come and go the um, whole corporate structure because this is a big company right they have so many um, employees they have so many employees so there is really no care taken about you, right? So if you work in a smaller company, the employee, the employer may not necessarily care about you, but they will have some kind of attention to you. They will still care a little bit. In this company, because there are a bazillion of other instructors, nobody really gives a shit. So if you have any kind of problems, if you have to call in sick suddenly, there's just a lot of corporate stuff that is not super nice and you may face a lot of bullshit and all that kind of stuff. So um, just keep that in mind. And um, for me, it's really important that the company I work for at least gives a little bit of um, attention to me that they care and they actually value my, my work and what I'm trying to do. That company, GABA, doesn't really value anything you do. As long as you bring in clients, as long as you keep submitting a lot of lessons, as long as you keep teaching a lot of lessons, they're good. If you start to, to work less, they will not be super happy about you. So um, it's just not a big, it's not a company that will value your efforts and your work. They just want to get clients and they want to make money. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you are thinking of applying to GABA, I think it's a good idea to do that because you can always leave. You, you don't have to work there for a certain amount of time and you can't leave any earlier. You can always leave. So, and it's a good way to get in Japan. So after this pandemic is over, hopefully, um, soon, when it's all over and when we have chances to travel again 
and people will keep applying. Um, if you ever consider going to GABA, maybe you should try, give it a go, um, see if you like it. You can always find another job when you, once you are in Japan, it will be way easier. So yeah, um, I hope that this video helped you guys and if you have any other questions, if you want to know more or any specifics, please let me know in the comments and I will be glad to help you out. And yeah, don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!